Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 31 for Wednesday, February 4th, 2015. Gallery Replacements. This episode is brought to you by lynda.com. Invest in yourself for 2015. lynda.com has thousands of courses to help you learn new tech, business, and creative skills. For a free 10-day trial, visit lynda.com slash arena. That's l-y-n-d-a dot com slash arena. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. Today, I thought I'd take a look at a category of apps that brings you closer to the images stored on your device. I don't know about you, but I take a lot of photos with my phone constantly. And when it comes to you know time to manage those photos or share them out to the world, show them to people on my device, I want a gallery app that's easy to use and doesn't get in the way of the images themselves seen a number of new gallery apps hit in the past few months, so I thought I'd take a closer look at three of the best that I've seen. And hey, I mean, we're here, so I don't know, that's a bright idea, maybe we should just show them to you. That's, that's why we're here. So that's this week's Best of the Best. First up is A plus gallery photos and videos. If you like the look and feel of Google's official photos app, You'll notice some similarities on the surface, but really you dig deeper, you'll see that they are very different. You have easy access to the pictures on your device from this app. You swipe right and you can set up Facebook image sync. This requires you to select or create a folder into which certain Facebook albums can be synced and stored locally. And swiping right one more time shows you albums or folders on your device that contain images. Now, go back to photos and notice up at the top there, it says moments. Moments is the most granular level you can get to when browsing your photos. If you tap that arrow, that brings you out to collections, shrinking everything down to a smaller grid of grouped dates. Stepping out once more shows an even smaller photo grid sorted by year. Everything animates nicely in those transitions, giving a gallery a very fluid feel. Tap this color box up top and now you can filter your images based on dominant colors. Want to see images that have a lot of blue in them? Just tap that blue color. And there you go. I'm sure this has some useful applications. None really came to mind to me at the time of this review, but regardless, it's nifty and definitely unique. A plus gallery and photo can be found for free in the Play Store. Next up is an app that I featured in the arena on All About Android episode 191, and it actually won that week's public poll. Quick Pick. This is a gallery app that packs in the features while still keeping a lean look and feel. One of the powers of Quick Pick is its account sync options that enable you to connect the app to Picasa, which is basically Google Plus Photos, Dropbox, Google Drive, Box, Flickr, OneDrive, 500 pixels, and even more. After setting up account sync for these services, Slide Out Drawer now lists those accounts, allowing you to tap in and manage photos across many of your cloud services from inside one app. When viewing an image, there's an edit mode for very basic image editing, so you can do things like you know rotate the picture, or you can crop it before sharing it to your favorite social network. There's also Wi-Fi transfer, which allows you to connect to another device using the same wireless network to transfer images between the devices, bypassing mobile data. Neat feature. There's a slideshow mode built in that works from the camera roll as well as from connected services. And security options allows you to assign a password to certain folders and even to cloud drives that you've synced. Now, you can also theme the app. Theming options allow you to assign your favorite color to QuickPick's material design aesthetic. And finally, you can browse hidden files with the tap of a button. Check out QuickPick for free in the Play Store. 
And next we have Pictures. This is a beautiful gallery app that presents itself a bit differently from the previous two. First, we have the cover photo at the very top. This can be set to either show the most recent image inside that particular folder, or you can find your favorite to show off its contents. There's even a parallax effect that's subtle, but does bring some life to your cover photo. Swiping right brings out the left side tray that shows you all the different folders on your device that currently show photos inside. You can hide any of these folders from the list by tapping the pen up top and then the eye next to the folder you wish to hide. Now it's gone from the list. Now back to the main screen and then swipe right again. That gives you a few filter options for isolating the view to photos, videos, or to include both, as well as to filtering by location. This one's hard for me to show because I always turn location embedding in my camera app to off. Personally, I do this to minimize the risk of me publishing a photo that links to a place I don't want people to find out about. But awesomely, Pictures takes care of even that. Tap to share a photo and you get a nice customized share screen that's categorized to make it easier to find your preferred service. Select a service and now you can resize the image before sharing and yes, remove GPS data from the image before posting. I wish all gallery apps had this feature. And finally, tapping this calendar button takes you to a monthly calendar with image galleries embedded into the days on the calendar. That's handy for finding photos around a specific moment in time. Find pictures spelled P-I-K-T-U-R-E-S in the Play Store for free. All right, so now the hard part. I have to choose one app that reigns supreme. Is it A plus gallery photos and videos? Is it quick pick or pictures? So first off, I only noticed this after I recorded my review, but A plus gallery photos did some undesirable things to my Facebook feed. After setting up Facebook sync inside the app, the sync function brought all of the images I'd posted to Facebook onto my lo local device, and that's great. That's what I actually expected to happen. What I didn't realize is that A-plus Gallery then reposted those photos back to my Facebook wall again, spamming my followers with tons of photos that they've seen before. Had a lot of really confused uh, people like, why am I seeing this again? I ultimately deleted those duplicates from Facebook one by one. It's a one-step you know, one process for each photo. That kind of sucked. Uh, I took a closer look at A plus to see if I was missing something in the settings. I couldn't find any settings to allow me to disable this function without simply deselecting Facebook sync. So I don't think I'll be selecting A plus as the winner today. Uh, otherwise, it was a great app, but unfortunately, that didn't work so well. That leaves Quick Pick and Pictures. I have to say, both are pretty awesome picks for different reasons. Quick Pick packs all the cloud services into an app. Pictures make sharing photos to other services a bit nicer with functionality that resizes and strips GPS data. It also has that nifty calendar function. Ultimately, though, I think I still have to go with Quick Pick as my favorite. Aside from all of the uh, cloud service magic that it has embedded inside, it has an integrated image editor, that slideshow functionality, and hey, who doesn't like a little theming action from time to time? Now, if I missed an obvious app for this week's theme, send it my way, and I'll include it in a future battle of uh, gallery apps. You can send that to arena at twit.tv. All right, before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode, and that is lynda.com. Now, it's already February. I kind of can't believe that. And what are you waiting for? You can invest in yourself this year and learn something new with a free 10-day trial to lynda.com. Lynda.com is used by millions of people around the world and has over 4,500 courses, 4,500 courses on topics like web development, photography, visual design, business, as well as software training like Excel, WordPress, Photoshop. There's all sorts of software in there. All of their courses are taught by experts and new courses are added to the site every week. Do you want to improve your job skills and ask your boss for a raise or Make yourself more marketable to find a new job. Are you looking to explore a new hobby? You can set new financial goals. Make, you know, find a, a better work-life balance. Lynda.com has something for everyone. You can find the answers to all this stuff there. Since we're on the topic of photos, I definitely recommend checking out Lynda.com's courses on managing your mobile photos. There's Photoshop CC Essential Training and the Foundations of Photography series, which has tutorials covering topics like composition, exposure, and more. Bring your photos to life. Personally, I've checked out a number of audio production tutorials that are super inspiring to me, because that's 
one of my passions, covering topics like soundproofing your studio, mastering your audio, mixing techniques, and more. It's all well-produced, highly educational, and, uh, you know, you can check it out for yourself. Invest in yourself and sign up for a free 10-day trial to lynda.com by visiting lynda.com slash arena. With your membership, you'll get unlimited access to every course on lynda.com, including access on an, your Android device and your iOS devices as well, plus new courses as they're added each week. That's lynda.com slash arena to try it free for 10 days. Go ahead. I challenge you to learn something new. All right. Kind of following along with the theme of this episode, this next app aims to take your photos to a whole new dimension. Let's check out this week's big app. If you find yourself bored with your puny two-dimensional images taken with your smartphone camera, then have I got an app for you. It'll take the three-dimensional world that surrounds you and pack it into your pictures. Sort of. This week's big app is called Scene. It's a neat camera trick and a bit of a social network wrapped up into one. First, the camera trick. Similar in function to what the official Google camera app does to employ its lens blur effect, Scene enables you to frame your picture, tap the shutter button, and then shift the phone's perspective side to side. As it does so, you'll see these dancing stars that are apparently measuring the differences in movement based on images being either closer or further away from your lens as you move it. Do it right, and after a few moments of processing that actually made my Nexus 5 warm to the touch, you end up with an image that animates based on your arm movements. If you're holding the phone and looking straight at it while doing this, you get the illusion that you're able to look around objects in a three-dimensional space. It's very effective when it works. You can dial in a little bit of depth of field blurring for effect, and there's even a handful of photo filters to choose from because what photo app is complete without stylized filters? Honestly, it took me many tries to get a 3D image that looked convincing without the smearing that you see on the edges of some items in these shots. Now, now, about the social service, you can create an account and then you can publish your best masterpieces to the scene service that is filled with other public offerings by users of its Android and iOS apps. Go to Staff Picks to see a large collection of successful snaps. None of mine looked as good as these, but practice, as usual, will make perfect. You can favorite images and follow users who will shame you with their amazing three-dimensional abilities. Oh, and possibly the coolest part is that all of these images are Google Cardboard capable, so you can see your 3D creations in low-rent 3D goggles right from the app. In all, Scene pulls you in, and I found myself playing with it far more than I expected to. Create your own three-dimensional images with Scene, spelled S-E-E-N-E, -E -E, in the Play Store for free. It's really weird putting that app into Google Cardboard because it tracks where your head is in space, so you're not always looking forward. So when you saw that clip and it looked like you were seeing an inverted cat that's exactly what it was. I had to like rotate around to eventually find the opposite side of that. Uh, really cool though, uh, when it works and you can kind of reimagine, you know, your surroundings in a three dimensional space, kind of like a view master, very neat stuff. I love hearing from you guys. Thank you so much for always sending me recommendations and giving me ammo for this show. It's always very helpful. Send me your favorite apps, new categories, whatever you have to arena at twit.tv. I read it all and I add it to my document that I keep my Google doc for this show. So thank you for that. Uh, there's also a subreddit that you've heard me uh, go on about on previous episodes. I post categories to the subreddit. I ask you to let me know what your favorite apps are inside those categories and why you love them so much. I have a few up there right now that I'm looking for a little more input on. Uh, one on apps that modify or utilize sharing intents and how you share uh, your, your images and files using your device in interesting ways. There's another on battery, both you know battery saving as well as monitoring and stuff like that. And then also another one on feed readers that I really want to uh, finally do. I'm sure I'll do that in the next few weeks. Uh, so if you have any ideas for great apps in these categories, head on over to androidapparena.reddit.com and share them with me. Uh, you can follow me on Google Plus for my random Android related ramblings. I also host a live viewing party of each week's episode. I'm on set to answer questions you might have about apps on the show, really anything Android. And that happens every Wednesday at 4.30 p.m. Pacific following tech news tonight at live.twit.tv. And of course, if you miss the live taping every week, 
the episode is going to appear on our site. That's twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thank you so much for joining me once again today. My name is Jason Howell, and I'll see you next week in the arena.